let's put this video to bed. That's the Princess of Wales walking with a farm shop with the Prince of Wales, isn't it? Absolutely, 100%. Hello, I'm Matt Wilkinson, Royal Editor. Welcome to the latest episode of The Sun Show Royal Exclusive. And what a week it's been. The Sun landed the biggest royal scoop of the year by answering that question, where is Kate? But for some people, even video evidence and eyewitness testimony doesn't seem to be enough. With me today to break down the kate spiracy is a man known as the godfather of royal reporting. It's Robert Jobson. Robert? Hello, Matt. As I say, what a week it's been. It's been a great week for the Sun, great week for you. Brilliant front pages, great stories. I think, um, I think it really was one of the busiest weeks and most interesting weeks I've had in the 30-odd well, years of covering the Royals because it got to such a, a huge um, crescendo, really, of, of, of noise on the internet. And I think really what the Sun did was actually, with that video and with the story before the video, was show that the cake was fine and everyone needed to sort of back off. Well, let's put this to bed. You've seen the video. Yeah. I, I did the story, so I did two or three days of, of breaking this story. Yeah. You've seen the video. You, you know what the Princess of Wales has been doing. We, we both know the last couple of weeks, last couple of months, we probably have some in-depth detail on what's been happening with the Princess of Wales, some that can't be published, that can't be talked about. But let's put this video to bed. That's the Princess of Wales walking with a farm shop with the Prince of Wales, isn't it? Absolutely, 100%. And we've known, because we've been chatting, everyone, a lot of people behind the scenes, have been chatting that she's been getting in a routine mm -hmm. in the last few weeks, and that she has been seen out and about. And that's why it was a bit ridiculous when we, I was going on shows. Actually, I was listening, getting calls from people all over the weekend saying there's going to be a huge announcement on the BBC mm -hmm. about Kate. And you can, no, there's not. And then you get another call 20 minutes later. And this was all being fuelled by the madness that was on the internet, I think coming mainly from America and just whizzing around everywhere. And, and it got to the point where people were saying, yeah, well, I've got this from the, practically the director general. I've got it from someone who's the doctor to so and so. Well, I said, but you haven't. And then eventually, when you asked them and pinned them down, it was clear they hadn't. But that is the Princess of Wales. And even when that video was, was shown, brilliant stuff in the sun, um, People were ringing up from TV channels saying, is it her? I said, yes, it's her. And I couldn't believe they were still asking that question. Well, the problem for me was, so, so what happened to me? I got a phone call on Saturday night. Yeah. As all good stories start, it <laughs> came from someone having a chat in a pub. Um, and someone I know, a very good contact, said that they had seen the Princess of Wales and the Prince of Wales at the farm shop earlier that day on Saturday. Yeah. I got that stood up. It was a sighting, a verified sighting, 100% that she was there. We published that in The Sun on the Monday. And there you go. That, that, that's when people started kicking off, complaining that this was fake news. Um, the trolls suddenly appeared, saying that yeah. the sun had made this up. It was a false sighting. Um, she hadn't been seen. It, you know, all the other stories that come out about what people think has genuinely happened to her, people who don't know what has happened to her, all kicked off online. Then we got the video. OK, so a lovely guy called Nelson Silver came forward and said, well, I was there. I didn't think it was extraordinary because I hadn't been following the news. Once I showed it to my friends and family, they said they looked at me like I'd seen a ghost uh, because Princess of Wales hadn't been seen yeah. since... Um, well, since, yes. yeah, since Christmas, officially. So actually, since, you know, since December the 25th when she walked with... Um, and we thought that would be the end of it. OK, we thought we have, we've cracked it, we've told the world that the Princess of Wales is up, walking around, looking happy. Um, the trolls, uh, I mean, it's difficult to delve into these often anonymous people. Do you think are these people just looking for kind of validation on the internet to kind of get their friends to, or do you think they actually have any kind of information or are they motivated by some kind of hatred for the Princess of Wales? There is talk that quite a lot of the people that have spread this misinformation are connected to uh, Sussex Squad supporters on Twitter and TikTok. Have you seen any of that? Well, some of the more vile stuff, I wouldn't be surprised. I and mean, it's all of the things you just said there. But years ago when I started and when I was on the Sun as Royal reporter in the, in the early 90s, we used to get the Green Ink Brigade. They'd sending massive, massive letters in Green Ink telling you all the conspiracies that were going on. Now people have got the freedom to put it just out there in the public sphere. But this one gathered more momentum. This really did take off in a, in a way that I haven't seen anything take off um, for a long time. 
And when we saw the video, I was very relieved. I'm sure Kensington Palace were relieved because ultimately it did dampen down quite a lot of the speculation. There were people going around with free Kate T-shirts. I mean, how bonkers is that? Well, Kim Kardashian. I mean, this what, is what, something... Free from what? <laughs> this is something that really um, I thought was bad taste. She posted online um, on one of her accounts. She said a picture of herself and is on my way to go find Kate. Do you think people like Kim Kardashian? And also there was a US TV host, wasn't there, on Saturday night yeah, that, yeah. that poked fun about the state of their relationship. It's, it's got to that stage where, yeah. where on, a, on a major US TV show, like Stephen Colbert was, was mocking them. Do you think people like Kim Kardashian and other people who have spread these falsehoods, do they really take a hard look at themselves and maybe apologise to the Princess of Wales and us? They should, they won't. The reality is they should take a good hard look at themselves because actually what they were doing was just trying to generate clickbait for their own their own, self, their own publicity and their own websites and their own online um, platforms, which is all ridiculous. I, I, I confronted someone who was wearing a free Kate T-shirt yeah. on a show the other day and they were convinced, they were saying, well, you can't believe what's written in the sun. I said, well, we, you can, as it is there in black and white. And, the, and, he's, and they were basically, they were knocking out these T-shirts like 20 quid ago. So the whole thing is just, it was a bit of a scam. I was surprised how much, how much it, got, it, it got so much traction. The Megan trolls may well have been involved because the, on the more vitriolic side of things. But really, I think it, this went even wider this time than that because it was reaching legitimate news organisations and journalists. I addressed the Foreign Press Association um, the other this week, and there were about eighty odd different uh, correspondents, London correspondents, and that all the questions were: Was it really her? Was it her? I said, guys, just step back and look at it. Look at the look at the video, and just spend it, and then just question yourselves because it's obviously going to be her. Well, there's a couple of things here. I, I think that. If we got a time machine and took people back to, I think it was 12.19 on Saturday, uh, to, to the car park at the farm shop for people to actually see the couple walk through the car park, many people still wouldn't believe it. I mean, there is that, such a sickness that people will still look at that video and ask for some kind of DNA test or something <laughs> like that. Do you know what I mean? But the point of also is that people don't, even the people at the farm shop, a lot of people, they get a d double take and they don't even realise it's them half the time. But look, I think it was a great story. And in a way, it def definitely was the story, not just... Um, in this country, it was an international scoop, which is, which was great because it actually um, you know, it, it got some um, references and, and checks all over the world. So yeah, well, I think it was a great one of the biggest scoops certainly of this year, certainly the last couple of years. Is there a time now? Because obviously people still, as I say, we're just talking about the fact that some people still don't, you know, still, are still mixed up in all these kind of conspiracies. What will it need for everybody to just calm down? and just give the Princess of Wales a little bit of respect, a little bit of time. I mean, Kensington Palace have maybe brought this upon themselves Without by doubt. publishing that, the, the doctored photograph. Mm. Yeah, well, they did. There were two things, the doctored photograph and the William's sudden disappearance and not turning up at teen, uh, Constantine II's uh, memorial service where he was due to give a reading and not given an explanation for it. I mean, I think Kensington Palace... PR machine has it's come off the rails a little bit. That you know, I can fully understand that their idea that was to was to uh, that she give her privacy in this time. She's recuperating from a major operation. But if you don't want to talk about and you want to keep it completely private, number one, you don't say it's an abdominal surgery. Number one, you don't even say that. You say it's a deeply private. Uh, it's a personal uh, operation and it's, and it's private. End of. Um, I think they should have followed the example, the lead of the king's. People, but there's this ridiculous nonsense between Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace. They're all one palace, and it's inflicted badly upon them. I think they should have followed the Buckingham Palace lead and had some pictures of her looking at, um, I don't know, some get well, get well soon cards. Maybe even done a little video about you know playing with the kids. They've got Andrew Parsons, who works with them, getting a um, uh, sort of a, you know an archive together, and he's the guy who used to work with Boris behind the scenes. When well, you saw those pictures of Boris and his children when he was Prime Minister and Carrie, etc., he was there taking pictures. They've already got that, so why not get him to take the picture? Then there wouldn't be any of the, the messing up 
of... Um, well, they've got a slick media team. They've got, they've got a, a social media exactly. team where they put... When they go on engagements we see online, exactly. they have a two or three, you know, a 20 or 30 second yeah. uh, glossy video. They've got lots of young people. Use them. They could use them. You know, the bottom line is if you want a wall built, get a brick layer. If you want a photograph taken, get a professional photographer. The mistake that was made here, in my opinion, was they tried to rush something out um, she doctored it. She's probably doctored all the pictures. We don't know. But, you know, that's something that people do if you're going to keep it for your private album. But if you're going to issue it through Kensington Palace as an official picture, you can't then issue it to the news organisations and the wire agencies because, you know, we have a response, but as newspapers and, and wire services, to put out accurate information and accurate photographs. And if, then, if they have been doctored, then it's not, and that breaks the trust between reader and the organisation. So it was a mistake. It's not the end of the world. I'm sure they'll recover from it, but they, I'm sure they won't be doing it again. With, with, the, with that picture in particular, I know The Sun, we, we put on our front page, leave Kate alone, because that was, we kind of accepted it was a mistake. We yeah. kind of forgive that it was a mistake, but the, the bullying that she then received from people uh, online and the, and the attacks also in other parts of the, of the media was a little bit sickening, I think, for... It was outrageous what they did to Kate after that happened. I mean, what would they bully anybody else that had been... Uh, who's actually recuperating from a, a serious uh, sur a surgery procedure? No, they wouldn't. And they wouldn't dream of it, but they think that, you know, just because she's the princess of Wales, they can do these things. You know, you've got to remember here that these people are human beings, first and foremost. And I think that they're also you've got to remember all these memes with their children. You know, these, these are little children. They're going to be seen, these memes, by, by children in their school and they're going to get mocked as well. I think that people lost sense of, of their humanity a little bit when it came to this. And I think when it comes to bullying, it's not acceptable. and It wasn't acceptable that they did to Kate. And I think, really, people did do need to heed the sun's warning and lay off. So we can oh, agree. So we can ex we we accept that the Princess of Wales made a mistake with that picture. Okay, and she she's did. But I don't it. think she should have taken responsibility. I think the responsibility should have been the organisation. Should have been Kensington Palace and said we issued the wrong picture. Not got into details of who did the doctoring. So that was a muck up. But we can accept, hopefully now, that all these lies about her having all these operations or doing this, that, or the other. Or the, I don't even want to repeat some of the bonkers stuff that people are sharing. That's all false and that that video was true. But do we think there is a rumour, uh, or there are, I don't want to keep going to these rumours and conspiracy theories, but there are people who suggest that it was a, it was a setup, and that by making the Prince and Princess of Wales captured on a on, on mobile phone video uh, by, by a passerby when they popped out shopping was something that was beneficial to Kensington Palace and maybe they engineered that in some way. Are we going too deep into the crazy conspiracy theories well, ourselves? Well, they're not pop stars. I mean, you know, this is the sort of thing that does happen with rock stars or, or reality TV celebrities. They, that sort of thing can be organised by their agent. But it clearly wasn't the case. I mean, you were involved. It's, you know the score more than anyone. That photograph followed a story that you stood up that, um, you know, wouldn't have gone in the paper unless you 100% believed it. And then it followed up when someone said, oh, you know, I know, I know this happens with The Sun, you know, and other, more than any other newspaper, actually, from when I was working here, then the people will ring in with something and say, I've got this, sort of thing. And mm -hmm. so, ultimately, it was a legitimate um, scoop, it was a legitimate story, and it did stop and dampen down the um, quite ridiculous and fanciful suggestions that were going around. Will the palace be uh, relieved that the world has now seen her well out walking in, in a credible, legitimate video taken by, you know, taken by basically a, a shopper? Will the palace be relieved that the world is now calming down a little bit and that, that she actually has been seen out well? Well, I think the palace should be relieved that the sun has done them a favour, but also they're, they'll be worried that it's encouraging paparazzi photographers, it's encouraging, you know, what they would regard as intrusive... Um, photography. But the, the bottom line is, if you're going to go out in public, in a public space, you know, in this current world we live in, with everyone's got a mobile phone practically, that someone will get a shot or a video. So um, it's just the way it is. So I think they would have expected someone to do that. Not necessarily planned it, but probably thought that it would happen. Mm. So go on the, um, the, the fact that there has been lots of online craziness and bullying... Um, a lot of it, as I said earlier, has come from, I've noticed, has come from uh, people who call themselves Sussex Squad, people that stick up for the Duke and Duchess of, of Sussex. A lot of it is in America. Um, 
do we think that possibly the Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, has in the past have spoken out about online bullying? Uh, the pair of them have... I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, Meghan was in Austin and she was talking about how, how terrible she found online bullying when she was uh, a working member of the royal family and the, the criticism of her children, etc., etc., that she was complaining about that was targeted at her. Are we possibly surprised that nobody really has come out in support of... The Princess of Wales, and could this be, have been an opportunity, maybe, for Meghan to to say something and support her royal sister? I think if Meghan wanted to do that, um, she, she could have done it. But I think actually that people would have probably you know, said that she was doing it for um, personal gain and criticised her unfairly or not. The reality is, when there was something on page six in America. Um, about a statement that they'd given that they had nothing to do with any any of these things. A lot of people said, oh, why are they doing that? And they questioned there. So I think they were, they're a bit damned if they do, damned if they don't. Um, look, the online bullying is dreadful. We've all been subject to it. I mean, I've had some pretty vile things said, said about me and death threats and whatever. You've just got to turn it off or block them. And the reality is, it, I think, when it comes to somebody who is sick who's recovering from serious um, medical condition and wants to keep that condition private, I really think that people need to look, take a long look at themselves to say, whatever you're writing, you know, just think about this. could be your daughter, your, your wife, your sister. And I don't think that they really uh, have got much humanity if they don't. Uh, very true. I, I went to the Sussex's, um, you know, operations last yeah, yeah. week and asked whether... Megan or, the, or a spokesman would, would put anything out in support or to mm. uh, support of Kate and to, to criticise the treatment she was getting online and yeah. we didn't get anything back. But we have actually made that effort to ask them if they, you know, if anyone from their team would say anything based on the fact that Megan has been so outspoken about the bullying that she's received. If Megan's that outspoken about it, what, how difficult would it have yeah. been to say that we hope this stuff stops? Do you, do you think there could have been a back... There's no real back channels. They're not talking. Do you think that Megan and Harry could have reached out to, to Kate privately? I don't think so. No. I think that all this stuff about reaching out hasn't really been true. A lot of it is, um, you know, has, if they've reached out, it hasn't. There's been no hand at the other end, particularly with the Waleses. Um, and that's if you remember when Harry flew over you know, after his father had, you know, been diagnosed with cancer. Um, there was all this talk about reaching out before all that, and I don't think any, there was any real connection. No, fine. Do you think the um, out in California? How would they be looking at this generally, Meghan and Harry? Would, they must be kind of upset. How do you think Meghan and Harry would feel generally about this whole furore that's happened with Kate? No, I'm sure that as human beings, they'd be upset for, for Kate, and they would. Has they been there? Um, I, you know, I don't think that they would be reveling in it. Some people have got this thing where they're pitched against each other. They both got their own lives. I mean, you know, both sets of both couples have got their own lives. I just don't think they particularly get on anymore. And after the book, in which William was accused um, of bullying and all the other things he was accused of, and they accused Kate of things, I can't see that there's ever going to be that... The bridges are going to be built, uh, you know, to re-establish re that, that relationship. Now, you are currently writing, or have you finished a book? Pretty much finished the book, yeah. It's called Catherine, uh, The Princess of Wales, a Biography of the Future Queen. It's published by... John Blake Bonnie, it will be out on the 4th of July. Um, um, yeah, and I'm obviously having to re-update uh, re quite a lot at the moment with all your scoops that you keep breaking, um, which uh, um, obviously making the story develop. Hopefully, I'm going to leave a bit of space for photographs as well for when we do finally see her in public in a more relaxed atmosphere. Now, that could well be for Easter Sunday. Now, if I was the palace, I would say, ma'am, if you want to go to church on Easter Sunday, which I'm sure she probably will want to, um, maybe go um, with, uh, to St George's Chapel with the, with the children, and that would really end it altogether. But I would think it's not necessarily going to be nailed on that. Um, they might well be going away for a break, you know, before middle of April, which I think is when mm. we'll see uh, Kate back again. I know as we've discussed, that she is getting into a routine and she wants to be on her best. She's reading in behind the scenes about all the things that she wants to do. You know, she's putting money behind the bar for the regiment she's colonel in chief of. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes which um, show that she's definitely on the road to recovery. 
It's the, um, I mean, the, the, the fact that you, you, you've been putting this book together over a, a large amount of time, how do you think, from the sources that, you know, you have to remove what's in your book, but how do you think uh, the friends and family and sources connected to Princess of Wales will be coping at this time? And how do you think the Princess of Wales has been coping over the last couple of weeks and months, based on what you know? Well, I mean, the, my book's really a look at her whole life, from it was initially um, becoming Catherine, you know, her route from Kate Middleton to to be in Catherine, the Princess of Wales. So it's not really a it's sort of a shock horror, lots of different, you know, Meghan versus Harry type stories. It's really a, a Meghan versus um, Kate type stories. It's about the whole picture of Kate. I, I think that one must remember before and that brilliant smile that she has and she was showing in that Sun video, um, where you can clearly see it's her by her, 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 the way that she smiles. There's a steely determination in Kate. She's somebody... I think Mike Tyndall calls her the engine. She's like a car that keeps running. She's a very determined person. And I, I think that behind that sort of lovely smile is a steely determination to get back and to prove everybody, not only wrong, but to say, I'm here, I'm doing these, I'm going to support William, I'm going to support the King, and I'm you know, going to play my major role as a senior member of the royal family. So I, I have no doubt that when she comes back, she'll be on top form, but she wants to be, you know... Um, Perfect before she returns. The comeback's going to be huge, isn't it? You know, the official comeback. You talk about Easter Sunday. Um, that would be the ideal scenario because uh, you could drive down the hills, you could drive it down the hill to St George's Chapel. Photographers would be a distance away, not huge members of public. Get her into St George's Chapel for the Easter Day service with all her family and then pull back. But bearing in mind that we constantly wanted a Mother's Day photo or were expecting a Mother's Day photo. Is Easter Sunday going to be too soon? Is that too much pressure on the Princess of Wales to force the demands she comes out to see? Only, only Catherine will know whether it's too much pressure. I, I think that she's a very media-savvy person. She, she and William would have discussed this. Um, it's a perfect uh, time to do it because the media are held back. Um, it's a family occasion. Most of the time, she is not in public gaze. Um, and... She will look a million dollars dressed up for for the for the church. So, I personally think if they want a nice relaxed holiday and do not want to increase the value of any paparazzi <laughs> pictures, if they're on holiday for Easter, um, I would just do it, get out of the way, and go and have a nice relaxing time. The it's it's global news, all right. Everything about since the Princess of Wales um, went into hospital in January. What do you think? is the reason behind the worldwide obsession for the Princess of Wales. Why is she... I don't know if she's obviously the future queen, but why is she so popular, so known? Why, is she, why does she cover the front pages of every magazine around the world and now we've obsessively um, been talking about, you know, her, her condition and her comeback? What is it about her that makes the whole world obsessed? Well, the royal family, you know, has always been very uh, popular globally in terms of a news story, but, you know, the last Princess of Wales being... Diana was was huge, and so we've now got this new Princess of Wales, and, and it's only recently, really, that she's been the Princess of Wales. We no longer have the Me Meghan and Harry regularly in that position with all the magic of the royal family around them. And who else is there? There's the King and Camilla, and there's and there's William and Kate. She is the glamorous figure. She is the star. Um, she is the person that the that everyone wants to see or the glossy magazine wants to put on the cover. She's the person that um, people in a coffee room want to discuss what she's wearing. So she knows the spotlight is on her and it's a huge pressure to have to deal with that. But at the same time, she's a mum, she wants to spend time with her children and she needs to get the balance right. And I think up until now, she has got the balance right. But the way the media has changed over the last 15, 20 years, there's so much depends on the royal family and uh, shows like ours, yours here, you know, which are featuring about the royal family and others as well. And so they depend on such a glamorous person, a beautiful person as, as Catherine, to, to actually feature in their shows. And when she disappears from Christmas through to March and through to Easter, that there's all this, there's this huge void that they need to fill. And that's been filled by chatter, online conspiracies and, uh, and uh, bizarre theories about what's going on. I find it extraordinary that when the late Queen died, we were, as journalists and a nation, kind of expecting some kind of earthquake where people would have a collective heart attack because 
the Queen Elizabeth II had been with us for so many years that everyone would miss her and not, not know what to do. That didn't happen. It was quite a smooth transition. Uh, Charles became king, everyone accepted Charles. Huge crowds come out for Charles. But there has been like a collective worldwide heartbreak that we haven't seen, that we've been unable to see the yeah, Princess of Wales point. since December the 20... To well, December that's the a good point, I think, Matt, because I think when the Queen was still with us and the Duke of Edinburgh, she was still that superstar. Even though she was a, a lady in her 90s, whenever she appeared, there was a wow factor mm. that was just as big as any, if not bigger than any other member of the royal family. And I think when she went, there was, you know, there was the expectation that... She was a woman of a certain age, and it was inevitable, really. And then Charles steadied the ship very well. I think that his speech that he gave in the aftermath of the uh, the death of his mother was beautiful. And then he's transitioned. A lot of people just warmed to the king straight away. But now we've had this, you know, 2024, I don't know, it's an Anna Cerebellus, but it's up there um, in terms of uh, drama. You know, two very senior members of the royal family, the most senior, the king, announcing he has cancer. And then the uh, the most glamorous and star of the show, if you like, disappearing from the scene while she has private uh, surgery, abdominal surgery. Major, major stories that you couldn't really have thought up would be happening um, in that time when the Queen passed away. So I do I do think that um, also there's been a, a, a slimming down of the number of members of the royal family that are written about mm -hmm. and, uh, as, as well. You know, Meghan and Harry, they're across the pond, you know, Prince, Prince Andrew is, is out of the scene. And so you're left with only the Kents and the, the cousins of the Queens in the 80s. And, you know, uh, and the Edinburghs with um, um, Sophie and Edward there. So there's not very many players anymore than when there used to be, you know, a whole balcony full. <laughs> you, you mentioned about Diana. You reported in Diana's era. Yeah, I did, era. yeah. Um... The, every, the whole worldwide, as I say, of course, I call it an obsession. It feels like an obsession. It's just like the whole, every single media now. Back in the day, it would have been, you know, TV news, magazines and um, and newspapers. Now, with the, with the plethora of online platforms, it's the, the royal beat is so much wider and the, the demand for information and, and news is so much wider. Can we compare what happens to the Princess of Wales, the new current Princess of Wales, Kate, compared to what the uh, obsession was like with Princess Diana when you were re reporting on Diana? I think the obsession was different because there's less platforms. If Diana had been alive today, I think, and what was going on then was going on now, it'd be, it'd be mayhem. I mean, you've got to remember you were dealing with the end of the marriage of the future king and queen, so it had constitutional implications. Eggs were being thrown at Prince Charles in the street and he was being told he should be ashamed of himself. So it was a drama every day. And when Diana appeared, you know, she had that special X factor, I think, that um, set her apart even from the royals of today. Um, but now, I think, because there's so many platforms and so many expectations, it, it, it's a different type of um, pressure. And I think that they've really handled it quite well in terms of the two principals, William and Catherine, because they... Well, because they know they, they've got to switch it off sometimes. And I think with online, you can just switch it off. Whereas when it was front page all the time, which it has been to a degree, certainly in the last week or so, um, it's very hard to. And um, particularly also when it's been reported the same way it has been on the main TV channels. It never used to get that much coverage on the main TV channels, only when it was a major constitutional story. But now they seem to be reporting on it most days. Mm -hmm. So I think it has changed. Um, but I still think back then, maybe it was because I was a lot younger, um, it seemed to be, um, to me, that she was a bigger global star than than um, than Kate and William. I think Diana, it was known pretty much you know, in every village and every, uh, everywhere around the world and people had heard of her. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think it was different, but I think that Diana probably... If you balanced it, it was a bigger, iconic global star. Now, the, obviously, the palaces are different now, um, the way the palace op operations uh, yeah. work. Um, do you, is there any changes, like, based, on, based on what's happened in the last couple of weeks, are there any changes, do we think, that needs to be made? With, are, they, are they up to speed with, uh, with, 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 with 2024? You know, is it a smooth operation? Is it running well? Obviously, we've got the king out. And we totally understand that, and we just wait for him to, to get better and come back. Obviously, we, 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 they've asked us to uh, be respectful for Kate and let her, you know, 
t take a time off. But have they been, um, have they been, you know, caught napping with, with, with the arrival of social media? Are they in control? What's happening? I think there needs to be a restructuring, really, because, you see, one thing that's come out of this, which is from the doctor's photograph, is that the royal family's brand has been damaged. I mean, you know, whether it's Kensington Palace, whether it's Buckingham Palace, it, Clarence House, it doesn't matter. And I think that there's been even some, you know, little bit of whispers from one to the other, oh, this isn't our problem, Buckingham Palace. This is Kensington Palace's problem. I think when I started, we had one press secretary, one deputy press secretary, and the rest of them were assistant private secretaries and then below them press officers who would be all answerable to the one person at the top of the pyramid, the press secretary, who wouldn't deal with the private secretary, he, he, would, he would deal with, directly with the monarch. So, therefore, if this had been a mess-up on their watch, well, and there were plenty, you know, it would have to go through that information. So that person, whoever it was, back in the day it would have been Charles Anson, and he would have had to go in and speak to the Queen about that. So if you're, you've got that to face, you know, on a Monday morning, you know, and you've had a, you know, a whole list of things that have gone wrong, you will be making sure your team are on top of everything. And I think what's happened here is because they're working separately and they've got separate bosses and separate things, they, things have just been put straight out. Um, yeah, and you can't really blame the press secretary if he's been handed a photograph and, he, and, the, and then he, he, but he's taken by his boss, in this case, William on Kate's camera or whatever. He, he's going to put it out. But I think that if you would have an answer to the king or the queen as she was, Queen Elizabeth... She would say, well, but didn't anyone check that it had been doctored? And did anyone you could just hear the Queen or Prince Charles. I mean, I know that Prince Charles, for example, when he had a whole series of photographs taken of him in his military uniforms, OK, regalia, and beautiful, you know, pictures. But this he recently, knows that, is it? Yeah, and this was quite recently, this year, at the beginning of the year, I think, or maybe back in the last year, and he didn't like them. And so he had them reshot with... Uh, costing thousands of pounds of his money, but reshot for... Posterity, because of course these pictures are historic documents. So he had them reshot with a studio photographer, and they look great. You know, they look because he's a stickler for the detail that they were proper pictures. That's why in the past you've had Cecil Beaton taking pictures. Now, what I think is missed, we've missed something here is that you've got to remember in 150 years' time, George as a little boy or Charlotte, these will be historic pictures, mm. and they can't. They have to be accurate for, for history's sake. And so I think with, something's been lost there. And even the days of Diana, they used to always employ or use someone like Tim Graham from Getty Images, who would come in and take a set of professional pictures for their archive. I think that's got to be remembered, and they should realise, I think, that in that system, there needs to be professionals used, but also you've got to be answerable to the king, ultimately answerable to the king, because when we're being compared, they'll wire services to Iran or to or to North Korea. It has a bad impact upon brand, monarchy, brand, royal family. It's interesting, really, because I was thinking this the other day, that, that the, going back to, the, the say, the, the picture, this is just a family at the end of the day. It's just a family photo family. for Mother's Day. This isn't like a political manifesto or some kind of, you know, thing, no. a team photo, a football team photo. But it's, it's when it was nice put out, that, wasn't picture. it? it was, that's absolutely right. I mean, should, like, it's absolutely right. That's perfect for the album. That's perfectly for the family. But as soon as it passes the threshold of going through Kensington Palace as an official picture, all issues of integrity, authenticity and truth come into play. And if it's been doctored, what, three times and 13 different things, I mean, you know, look, but it's not the first time. I remember years ago at Sophie Edwards' wedding, there was a picture, a family picture issued, and it was a sun-page lead. I mean, you could probably find it somewhere. There was a picture taken, and then they just macked a picture of William's head on because he was grumpy in the picture, and they wanted a picture of him smiling. And we looked at it, and then one of the, even back then they were, went through it, and so they, it's almost like they just stamped a picture on his head. Well, how many people, how many families or mothers or whatever like that haven't like doctored a photograph? How many celebrities haven't doctored an, an Instagram image or changed an Instagram? You even got that Google Pixel phone now, the Google phone now that, that does the best picture, so everyone's I, smiling. I agree with you. you know? But the trouble is, in a world where the camera does lie and uh, fake news is prevalent. Um, AI is taking over. We, you know, we can always, probably in about 10 years, we won't need to be here. We'll just have ourselves yeah. talking. And I've seen the videos, haven't you, of William talking and so he doesn't know where, you know, where's, where's Kate sort of thing. And it's his voice speaking. So in the day and age where you do have AI and the cameras do lie and they can lie, I think it's important that official um, yeah. organisations put out official, proper, pure, authentic pictures.
People would have been far more keen to believe our video and our sighting if Kensington Palace hadn't a couple, uh, literally a week before maybe doctored their photo, which then caused everyone to start doubting everything that they see. I suggest they all go to Specsavers. Yeah. And just <laughs> other, look at other the, opticians look at, and look are available. At, and other opticians that are yeah. available and look at the video and you can clearly yeah. see it's her. Um, and, you know, you know she didn't, she's not dressed in a glamorous outfit, she's not probably got any makeup on, but it's just her going shopping. Right, well, I hope we put that to bed. Definitely the video, definitely Kate. She'll be back on her feet soon. One more thing to touch on, uh, ultimately, sadly, Prince Harry in California. Donald Trump has done an interview in the UK. You know, he may likely to, he's likely to become president, you know, again, return. So Trump has said that he will look at Harry's visa or potentially warned that he could, have, you know, cast his eye over it or get anybody to, to dig into what exactly... This is all because there's a court case with uh, a pressure group in the United States are attempting to make public how he actually achieved the US visa based on the fact that he's expressed so many admissions about taking drugs. Should Harry be worried about Donald Trump becoming the next president? Would he actually genuinely kick him out of the US? I can't see Donald Trump kicking Harry out of the US, but he's using it, I think, to distract as a distraction from all these other court cases and problems. But, I mean, you've got to ask yourself about the wisdom of Harry putting all that information in his book, and now they're saying, well, you can't use the book as um, something that's as a testament of, tr of the truth. <laughs> well, then you now doubt, you, you, you doubt the, the credibility of the book or you'll put yourself into trouble. Look, I think he probably was very honest, whether he's filled out... His forms in the same way is probably unlikely. But will Donald Trump do anything about it? Um, I think he's going to have a lot bigger fish to fry than that. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. I really appreciate it. I Pleasure. think, hopefully, we have brought some clarity and sanity to the issues of the Princess of Wales, uh, you know, uh, conspiracy theories over the last couple of weeks. Well, but... I, th I think all people are going to do is click onto the website, have a look at the video, and if they don't believe it the first time... Click on again and look again and you'll see it is Kate. And we wish her to come back looking healthy when she's whenever ready. she's ready. Yeah. I think that's the issue. Yeah, when yeah. she's ready. OK, wonderful. Right, well, thanks very much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope we did get to um, answer some of your questions and get to the bottom of some of the major issues. If you like this content um, and you want to see more, please click subscribe and we have plenty more for you. Thank you.